How much coffee does a Korean adult drink? Amid the rapidly growing coffee market in Korea, what new strategies are coffee franchises taking to lead in the market? How did Korea's economy perform in the first half of 2014? And what are the key economic issues in the second half? Ammonia-fueled vehicle is under the spotlight as a futuristic, environment-friendly vehicle. How far has Korea's technology come? ICT technology that becomes the eyes and ears of disabled people. Let's meet the ICT services set to be launched for the disabled. We will take a look at North Korea's cheering squad, which will attend the 2014 Incheon Asian Games in September and explore Pyongyang's motive behind sending the cheering squad to the south. Hello, I'm Andrew Salmon and welcome to Bizline. Now, Koreans work the second longest hours in the OECD. What fuels this relentless energy? The answer may be coffee, because Koreans have probably the highest per capita consumption of coffee anywhere in the world. But this, of course, creates a situation of both high competition and market saturation. As a result, Korean coffee players are being forced to brew up some new strategies. Coffee shops can be seen on every main street in Korea. People even say that there is a coffee house on every other corner on the streets. Let's take a look into the growth of Korea's coffee market, which showed a huge growth in the past 15 years. It's lunchtime at an office district in Seoul. Most of the people on the streets are holding a takeout coffee cup in their hand regardless of their gender or age. The coffee houses aren't the only place where popularity of coffee can be witnessed. Offices and homes alike have instant coffee ready at hand. A cup of coffee after a meal or during a meeting, Koreans drink coffee all the time. So how much coffee do Koreans drink every day and how much do they spend? Last year, Korea imported 120,000 tons of coffee, which is enough to provide 298 cups of coffee to adults above 20 years old for one year. Office workers mostly spend $3 to $5 a day to drink coffee, and even 5.4% of the surveyed said they spend about $10. Coffee became popular since the 1980s in Korea, which began from instant coffee because it was easy to make by just adding hot water. The coffee market in Korea began to grow explosively into the 2000s. Coffee shops that began to open in Korea from the late 1990s made Koreans fall in love with espresso, which also grew steadily. As of 2012, the coffee market in Korea is worth 4.13 billion US dollars, which is about a 20% annual growth for a five year period. The breakdown of the coffee market by percentage shows that instant coffee takes 32%, canned and bottled ready to drink coffee markets at 29%, and coffee houses at 39%. Along with growth of the coffee market in Korea, coffee shops grew through large-sized franchises. And now, there is a view that the coffee market has reached a plateau in Korea because of saturation in franchised coffee shops. As a result, large-sized coffee shop franchises are introducing upscale coffee houses to attract a new range of customers. 
Korea's first espresso coffee franchise, Holly's Coffee, opened Coffee Club in June, which specializes in hand drip coffee to take the lead in the upscale coffee market. At the club, a barista personally brews the coffee, a strategy to make itself stand out. 보통 일반 프랜차이즈 커피 전문점은 제가 원하는 원두 맛을 선택할 수가 없잖아요. 그래서 제가 제 취향에 맞는 원두를 선택해서 먹을 수 있다는 거는 굉장히 좋은 점 같아요. There are other upscale coffee houses in operation, such as Starbucks Reserve and Tom and Tom's The Calypso. 기존에 존재했었던 그런 뭐 에스프레소 커피 중심의 전문점들은 어느 정도는 뭐. 뭐 성숙기에 돌입을 했다라고 볼 수도 있을 것 같습니다. 하지만 이제 소비자들 자체에 이제 취향도 다양해지고 실은 마시고 계시는 그런 오케이션도 달라지는 것 같아요. 이제 그에 따라서 이제 기존의 어떤 커피 전문점도 존재하겠지만 이런 프리미엄 커피 전문점들에 대한 그런 뭐 니즈가 더 강해지고 그러면서 이런 시장 자체도 조금 더 성숙할 성장할 수 있을 거라고 생각이 됩니다. To target customers who are tired of existing large-sized franchise coffee shops, there is an increase of small coffee houses opening in a quiet neighborhood. They sell desserts and interior decorations, show unique characteristics to grab attention. 일반 여러 가지 그 프랜차이즈 매장 아무래도 좀 많이 북적인 활달함 그런 것도 있겠지만 여기는 약간 좀더 조용하면서도 그리고 일반 기존 매장에는 없던 여러 가지. 특색이 있으니까 그리고 커피 맛도 약간 획일화되지 않고 약간 또 다른 특이점 그 여기만의 장점이 있는 것 같아서 그점 때문에 이용하게 된것 같습니다. 그러니까 약간의 편안함도 있고요. 네. 저희 샵은 사실 단순한 카페는 아니고 디저트 샵에 커피를 같이 즐길 수 있는 그런 컨셉인데요. 스타벅스나 뭐 할리스, 커피빈 같은 그런 대형 프랜차이즈점 들보다 이런 지역의 작은 커피숍들을 선호하는 경향이 훨씬 더 가속화되고 있는 추세인 것 같습니다. 근데 제가 봤을 때는 이러한 추세가 계속 될 거라고 생각하고. The coffee market, which has grown huge in the past 15 years, looks to be slowing down in growth. However, the industry still sees the market full of potential with room for more growth. 어떠한 티 문화라든지 아니면 아라비카라든지 아니면 어떠한 전통 국산 차라든지 이런 형태의 참나로다가 저변의 확대가 시작이 되기 시작했고요. 다소 지금 커피로 이, 아, 대명사 같이 되고 있는 어떤 음료 시장에 대한 부분도 어떤 그런 다양성에 대한 기반을 가질 것이고요. 하지만 커피에 대한 중독성과 카페인 성분에 관련된 어떤 충성도가 줄어들 거라는 생각보다는 그런 것들이 좀더 품질 위주의 건강 위주의 내용으로 소비 형태가 증가할 것이고 한편으로다가 다양한 음료 시장의 재진입에 따라서 고객의 어떤 분산 현상으로 아마 나타나는 것이 또 커피 시장의 앞으로의 전망을 예견할 수 있는 내용이라고 말씀드릴 수가 있습니다. Korea's coffee market has entered a new race with upscale coffee shops. It remains to be seen whether the latest change will be a catalyst for further growth in Korea's coffee market. Time flies like an arrow. We're now well into the second half of 2014. And Korea's economic indicators in the first half are looking very, very positive. But do these numbers tell the whole story? Moreover, what will be the outlook for the rest of the year? To answer these questions, we have with us a professor of economics at the elite Yonsei University here in Seoul. Dr. Lee Duan, welcome back to Bizline. Good to see you. Okay, let's just look at some, some numbers. The, mm. the main bourse, the Kospi, is comfortably at the 2000 point level. Um, we've seen record export numbers, We've seen a record run of, I think, 27th monthly mm -hmm. current account surpluses. Mm -hmm. Inflation is looking comfortably low. Mm -hmm. Generally, this looks pretty positive. Mm -hmm. So given all this, what grade would you, as mm -hmm. a professor, mm -hmm. give the Korean economy for the first half uh, and why? Well, yeah, as we mentioned, the macroeconomically speaking, mm -hmm. most of the indicators look pretty positive. Yeah. So out of 10, maybe I can give 7 or 8 mm -hmm. to the Korean economy. But still, it is a little bit short of our potential yeah. you know, in terms of growth rate, 
Mm. Actually, uh, we I think we are, we have achieved something like a 3.7 percent or 3.8 percent mm. growth in the first half. Yeah. But our potential should be yeah. somewhere no. around four percent. So okay. we, we have s slightly uh, less than expected growth. Yeah. But the real disappointing thing is, if you look at the numbers, mm. if, if if you look at inside the the macroeconomic numbers, mm. then it is disappointing because that most of the growth actually came from export. Yeah not from domestic demand. The old story though, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And does this explain to you then why there seems to be, if you look at public surveys, um, much more pessimism about the economy among the, uh, mm. the general populace than you'd expect given these very rosy numbers and, and the government doesn't seem too mm. happy with the numbers either. You know, I mean, what is it that is driving this, this wedge or this mm -hmm. gap between mm -hmm. the, the rosy macro numbers mm -hmm. and then uh, the actual mm -hmm. um, perception of the public. Well, that's true. The, uh, especially the public perception yeah. is not as good as government analysis. Right. Now, uh, if you look back, by the uh, early 2014, mm. we really had rather optimistic view about yeah. the uh, 2014 growth rate. Mm. However, after the outbreak of that, you know, Sewol uh, Very vessels, tragedy, yeah. tragic disaster. Everything uh, turned out to be pessimistic and negative, especially mm. domestic consumption. Mm. And that's the point where government kind of lost control of economic policies as well. In the early 2014, mm. President Park geun announced a very strong drive for growth based on deregulation policies. Mm. But all of a sudden, this deregulation policies disappeared. No more discussion about deregulations, no more effort to, to, to pass those uh, legislations in the mm. national assemblies. And we kind of have nationwide depression after that uh, tragic disaster. But this, I mean, the Sewol was, mm -hmm. as you say, it was a terrible disaster. Mm -hmm. A lot of very young lives were lost. But how does that actually affect the macro economy? Mm -hmm. We're talking a psychological issue here, right? It is, but psychological issue mm. actually turned out to be a real economic issue mm. if you look at especially consumption data. Mm. Now the other indicators such as uh, investment growth, macroeconomic uh, growth, export growth, mm. they are okay, you know, uh, yeah. not as, as fast as uh, what we expected, but they are still growing right. positively. But if you look at the consumption growth rate, we used to maintain at least 2% growth by March 2014. Mm. But after April, when this disaster took place, consumption growth kind of halted around 0% uh, or 0.5%. Yeah. And it is still there. Mm. So, you know. Uh, it had a real impact then. It had okay. a real impact. Let's move on to the, the exchange rate. Now, in the first mm -hmm. six months, the, the one has continued to strengthen mm -hmm. against the US dollar. And of course, there are many, uh, including some of your colleagues, who will say this is entirely negative mm -hmm. for the economy as it mm -hmm. makes exports more expensive. Mm -hmm. Is this entirely negative? Well, normally, when you have strong currency, mm -hmm. when, when your local currency is appreciated, normally it has two effects positive effect and negative effect. And the positive effect is that, you know, a strong currency can lower the price level mm. and then it can boost consumption. Sure, sure, sure. That's a positive effect. And the negative effect is, of course, you can lose price competitiveness in mm. your export industry. But this time, the positive effect did not materialize. We only have the negative effect this time. That's why people are so pessimistic about currency appreciation okay. this time. Well, and talking further, mm -hmm. where do you see the one exchange, uh, the one dollar exchange rate being mm. at the end of this year? Below 1,001 to the dollar? <laughs> the prediction of exchange rate and prediction of stock market is something that you, sh <laughs> sh you should never do. Well, I'm putting you on the spot is. anyway. Uh, yeah. But uh, I know that some economic research institutes, yeah. they are setting up some scenarios, mm. you know, best scenarios and worst scenarios. And based on this worst case scenario, mm. yes, we are looking at numbers such as 950. Nine. Oh, uh, okay. But most of the uh, research institute, they predict that we will hovering around 1,000. 
So maybe okay. between 1,000 and 1,000, yeah. you know, 20 or something. And in terms of export pricing, mm -hmm. is that going to have a serious impact or can Korean companies handle that now, given their, their value proposition? Well, until now, I think most of the uh, big businesses yeah. have predicted mm. uh, such a movement so far. So, you know, so long as we do not experience a rapid and radical change in the exchange rate in, in the in the short period of time, mm. I think we can kind of maneuver. Yeah. But it all depends on how our competitors behave. It's mm. not just one dollar exchange rate that matters. More than China, one dollar, yes, right. B or Japanese yeah. yen, that matters a lot more to Korea. Gotcha. Well, let's move on. Mm -hmm. um, investment. Mm. Have we seen investment levels at the level you would like to see them in the first half? Is the corporate sector putting money mm. into the economy? Well, gradually. Mm. Actually, the uh, investment of the uh, facilities mm. are increasing. Mm. Uh, they are increasing somewhere around 4% or 5% okay. growth rate. That's not bad. Yeah. But the thing is, most of this growth is actually a reflection of bottom-up effect from the previous years. Last year, yeah. our facility investment was so slow. Uh, I see, so yeah. it's a rebound effect. It's a kind of a rebound yeah. effect. Okay. We call it bottom-up bottom effect. Yeah. Okay. And that's why uh, even though we have some, some, some increase of investment, mm -hmm. it is still not as good as what we expected. Um, you know, clearly the Chebol are uh, offshoring, they need to be have manufacturing bases around the world and of course, um, a lot, but a lot of them are sitting on massive piles of cash. Mm -hmm. um, is there a concern that this capital is just being underutilized? That is exactly what we're concerned about, you know. Yeah. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, potential to increase our investment. Yeah. But even though those big business groups increase their investment, they, they, they do it outside Korea. Right. And in order to encourage them to, to invest into Korea, we really have to go through more radical deregulations De right. and more, more peaceful and stable labor market conditions. Yeah. Okay. The outlook for the year, the BOK, the Bank of Korea, has mm. recently cut its overall outlook for 2014 from 4% to 3.8%. Mm -hmm. um, is this pessimism justified? Well, I don't think that's a pessimism, you know. 3.8% mm. growth, that will be still okay. the envy of the most of the OECD, most OECD countries, right? Common, yeah. And, you know, uh, I think it reflects, you know, uh, less than expected uh, growth of consumption and investment. Mm. But I think we can maintain this mild recovery of consumption and investment in mm. the second half of 2014. And in many areas, we actually do see some signs of positive changes. Mm. Such and as? Mostly uh, consumption, I think. Domestic I think consumption? Domestic mm. consumption will eventually pick up. Yeah. You know, we, we suffered from rather uh, long period of you know, uh, depression. Mm. However, I think it's about time to recover from yeah. this uh, sentiment. And would you say, I mean, that the, the, the psychological mm -hmm. sell-off shock um, mm -hmm. The, cu the country will get over this. I think so. Yeah. I think we will gradually get over from yeah. that uh, psychological shock. Mm. And the other positive factor is the uh, some some signs in the in the, in the real estate market. Mm. The government is trying uh, almost everything to Just revitalize yeah. the yeah. transactions in the real estate market, and it seems like that uh, their effort turned out to be kinds of a uh, positive. So if the real est estate market transaction mm. uh, can recover, then domestic consumption can also uh, recover. Got gotcha. you. Okay. Let's talk about what you would like to see happen in the second half. Let's mm -hmm. talk at it first from the perspective of business. What would you like to see business doing in, uh, in, in the second half of 2014? Well, in terms of business uh, area, mm. we really have to encourage more investment investment into facilities, investment into constructions, mm. and also invest investment into some civil engineering projects as well. And all th these three areas are very important for domestic demand, but it seems like that investment into facility will be the most important mm. factor, and that's exactly what government is trying to do. Sure, okay. Um, but as you say, there's always the uh, 
uh, this urge for businesses to to offshore. But mm -hmm. also, let's coming back to your other two points. Um, uh, construction that depends pretty much on the real estate market, mm -hmm. does it not? Which remains uncertain. Mm -hmm. And then the other issue is um, social overhead capital spending. Mm -hmm. I don't see any major infrastructure projects on the horizon right now. Mm -hmm. um, there's no present park. I think mm -hmm. perhaps to her credit hasn't come up with any overall mm -hmm. big uh, project mm -hmm. like Lee Myung Bak did with say the, the four right, rivers. You know. I don't think President Park's government will push uh. for such a big project. Yeah. Instead, I think they will rely more on deregulation policies and yeah. monetary policies as well. Okay. In terms That's of deregulation, I think they will try to remove the limitations on LTV regulation, loan to value regulations. If you mm. reduce the regulation on LTV, then people can borrow more money okay. from okay. bank yeah. when they buy house. Gotcha. All right, let's finish up with some big picture questions. What sure. do you see as the key opportunities and also the key risks facing the career economy in the second half? What, uh, what indicators, what factors should people be looking at? Mm. Well, in terms of consumption, I mm. told you that we expect more positive growth of consumption mm. in the second half. But once again, it all depends on public sentiment. Sure. Uh, but I still believe that public sentiment will recover in mm. the second half. But more risk actually uh, lies outside Korea. Right, let's talk about the international Korea. outlook. What are these risk and opportunity factors beyond Korean shores? Well, basically, what are the, big ones? the global recovery mm. from the financial crisis should continue. Yeah. Uh, currently, uh, US economy and European economies are on the track to recovery, mm. but we do have some more uh, some potential hurdles in the in the in the in the near future. Yeah. So we should not be bothered by any more uh, hurdles, mostly uh, from Europe. And also, the second factor would be China. Mm. Uh, China is trying to kind of avoid the hard landing. Yeah. It seems like they will succeed to avoid hard landing, but who knows, you know, especially their financial market has yes. a lot of uh, dangers Issues, which is yes. not fully revealed. Right. So that would be another potential danger. Okay. Dr. Lee, all I can say is thanks very much for your insight as usual and hope you have a, an enjoyable summer vacation. Thank thanks too. for being on BizLine. You too. Good to be here. Point cards or loyalty cards allow you to accumulate points during shopping and you can use them later just like cash. But they fill up much space in your wallet. It must be tough to carry them around as well as to find them and use them. This week's app of the week is Syrup that enables users to keep and use various point cards at once. Once you register the cards in the app, that's it. You can easily check all the places you can use the point cards. Besides, it informs you about the coupons you can use in your vicinity using location information. Whenever you need to get a discount and accumulate points, you can use the app by touching the screen. Now, you can consume in a smarter way. The chemical ammonia is best known for its piquant bouquet, but it does of course have industrial applications. It's used in the manufacturing of fertilizers and explosives. But how about fuel? Well, recently a team of Korean researchers have worked out a way to run vehicles using the chemical. And even if these vehicles don't smell that great, they are environmentally sound. Growing calls to reduce carbon dioxide emissions have brought the spotlight on alternative energy. Meanwhile, the U.S. Department of Energy has listed ammonia as an alternative energy source. Ammonia is known for its pungent smell and can be hazardous. So how is it used as a source for environmentally friendly energy? A compact car running on the road in steady speed. It may look like an ordinary car, but it's powered using ammonia instead of fossil fuel. Ammonia is an important chemical compound used to make fertilizers, synthetic fiber, and plastics. 
it's also known to be caustic and hazardous. So what makes it welcomed as a source for environmentally friendly energy? Ammonia is composed of water and water. When you use it, you get to use it as a source of water. When you use it as a source of water, you get to use it as a source of water. When you use it as a source of water, 어, 연소 시 물과 질소만 배출하게 되어 있어 온실가스 배출에 대한 염려가 전혀 없습니다. The Korea Institute of Energy Research in Daejeon. Scientists here focused on the fact that the combustion of ammonia and oxygen doesn't produce carbon and developed an ammonia fueled vehicle called AMV. 우리 에너지 기술 연구원에서 온실가스 배출이 없는 자동차를 개발하기 위해서 만들어낸 자동차로서 국내 제1호의 암모니아 자동차입니다. 전체 연료의 3, 발열량 기준으로 70%를 암모니아로 대체하였기 때문에 그 자동차 배출물에서 온실가스가 70% 저감될 수 있는 그런 친환경 자동차입니다. Active research on ammonia fueled vehicles began since the 2000s with the rising interest in environmentally friendly energy. Last year, an Italian tire maker, Marangoni, grabbed the world's attention with its successful test run of its ammonia-fueled car that drove 100% on ammonia fuel. Korea is the third country to introduce ammonia-fueled passenger cars after the US and Italy. AMV uses a mixture of ammonia and gasoline as fuel. The combustion rate of ammonia is one-sixth the speed of gasoline, so the fossil fuel was used to power a spark ignition engine. Currently, there is research underway utilizing diesel fuel. 연료 탱크도 가솔린 탱크가 있고요. 그다음에 암모니아 연료 탱크가 따로 있습니다. 그래서 뒤에서부터 가솔린과 함께 암모니아를 이제 앞으로 엔진으로 이송을 시켜, 시켜서 어, 이 분사기까지 오게 되는 것이죠. 그래서 여기 연료 라인들을 통해 가지고 암모니아가 들어오게 되고요. 암모니아는 여기 위에 있는 인젝터를 통해서 어, 엔진에 공급하게 됩니다. 반면 가솔린은 AMV is equipped with special parts in their engines for the utilization of ammonia, such as the fuel injector and the fuel supply system. Moreover, the engine system and fuel supply method is similar to LPG cars, which makes the commercialization of AMV more promising. AMV can run 10 kilometers per 1 liter and was successful on running on flat ground at a speed of 60 to 80 kilometers per hour. 혼합기 수준에서 암모니아 혼합기는 어, 가솔린 공기 혼합기와 동등한 수준의 출력을 낼수 있기 때문에 전혀 출력에 뒤떨어짐이 없고요. AMV showed a 70% drop in CO2 emissions than other cars running only on gasoline. If 20% of all vehicles in the country use ammonia-fueled cars, then the CO2 emissions can drop by 10.6 million tons per year. On the other hand, the hydrogen car, which is another type of environmentally friendly car, is expensive because the entire engine system has to be changed. Moreover, hydrogen fuel storage and transportation costs are four times higher than those of ammonia, which makes ammonia-fueled cars more economical. Recently, there has been a report that a technology was developed to lower ammonia production costs taking a closer step towards the commercialization of AMV. Scientists say that through continued research in developing an engine system wholly compatible to ammonia fuel, the commercialization of ammonia fueled vehicles could become a reality by 2020. 가솔린이라든가 디젤의 연료, 기존 연료의 사용이 없이 암모니아만으로 이제 연소를 하게 됨으로써 어, 배출물에 전혀 온실가스가 없도록 하는 것이 저희 목표입니다. 따라서 
디젤 엔진의 그 고압축비를 이용해서 암모니아 만으로 연소가 가능할 수 있도록 하는 시스템을 연구 중에 있습니다. By 2040, the number of automobiles running on roads across the world is forecast to double from the current figure. With the rising concern over greenhouse gas emissions, the development of ammonia-fueled vehicles as environmentally friendly cars looks promising, perhaps ready to change the landscape of the auto industry. In life, we all face problems. But let's remember, there's always someone worse off than yourself. Take, for example, the disabled. They face challenges in their everyday lives that most of us probably don't even give a thought to. So the ICT industry is coming to the rescue with a range of solutions designed specifically for the disabled. Let's take a look then at what some of these may be. Daily routine activities such as walking on the street, riding the bus and eating tasty food which are so natural to us could be a difficult task for some people. Welfare services aimed at enhancing lives of disabled people are being launched one after another and information and communications technology is at the center of this. Going to a bank to open an account and withdraw your deposit money is a task so difficult for disabled people. Recently, Industrial Bank of Korea, or IBK, has opened a video consultation center at its customer center, enabling customers to talk to the bank through a video connection using smartphones and personal computers without having to visit the banks themselves. The video consultation service enables customers to get face-to-face -face consultation from bank employees while sharing product leaflets and data screens regardless of their location. 지금까지 장애인분들은 여러 가지 불편한 요인들로 인해 금융권 이용 및 혜택에서 소외되었었던 것이 사실이었습니다. 2013년 7월 서비스를 시작한 이래 약 1년여간 5,600여 건의 상담이 직접 얼굴을 맞대고 화상 시스템에 의해 이루어졌습니다. Five branches of the bank are currently test operating booths dedicated for video consultations. By placing counselors who can do sign language at each branch, IBK is even offering consultations in sign language and sign language interpretations for speech impaired and hearing impaired customers. <laughs> When we stand before a famous painting, we can have the pleasure of seeing it and being moved by it at the same time. But the visually handicapped people who can't see have never had that feeling before. For these people, an app which provides verbal descriptions of works of art has been created for the first time in Korea. The audio content that provides descriptions of paintings is delivering visually impaired people the vividness of works of art as if seeing them with their own eyes. Standard Chartered Bank, which has developed this app, selected 500 works of art, picked 500 volunteers through a voice festival, and recorded their voices. The bank donated this content to various disabled people-related organizations and institutions, and also produced it as a free smartphone app. 일반인들에게는 작품을 눈으로 감상할 수 있는 기회가 있지만 시각 장애인들에게는 그림의 묘사를 생생하게 전달받을 수 있는 기회는 많지 않습니다. 그래서 이번 스크립트 개발을 할때 묘사를 좀더 세세하게 시각 장애인들이 그림을 눈으로 보는 듯한 느낌을 받을 수 있도록 많이 집중을 했고요. Even if they don't visit art galleries, visually impaired people can enjoy benefits of a high-class cultural life by being able to appreciate famous paintings with their ears and mind. 특히나 저처럼 눈으로 이제 색깔이라든지 뭐 형태라든지 이런 걸 인지할 수 없는 시각 장애인들은 조금 그림과 멀리 좀 거리를 두고 생활을 해 왔었는데 이 그림이 구체적으로 아, 이러이러한 모습을 하고 있고 이러한 색조고 상세하게 설명을 해주다 보니까 예전에 배웠던 것들과 이렇게 머릿속에서 조합이 되면서 
좀더 이해 폭이 넓어진 것 같아. 그림을 눈으로 보지는 않았지만. There is another app that users can enjoy a cultural life with their ears. Happy Audio Library, developed by SK Telecom, is dedicated for visually handicapped people, providing voice support for various contents and information, including books, news, magazines, and living information. 이 어플리케이션 같은 경우는 개발 당시에 저희가 그 시각 장애인들이 이 어플리케이션을 그 효과적으로 사용할 수 있게 하기 위해서 그 어플리케이션 개발진에 시각 장애인을 직접 그 투입을 해서 시각 장애인과 함께 이 어플리케이션을 개발하게 된데 좀더 의의가 있다고 생각합니다. This app raised the quality of visually impaired people's lives as they can read books they want to read and access living information regardless of time and space. 예전에는 이제 책을 읽고 싶으면 집에서 PC를 통해서 읽을 수가 있었는데 요즘은 핸, 핸드폰은 늘 갖고 다니는 거잖아요. 그렇죠? 늘 소지하고 있는 거니까 제가 어디서나 제가 듣고 싶은 책을 들을 수 있고 또 신문도 읽을 수 있고 SK Telecom also applied ICT not only in their cultural lives but also in their daily lives. To help visually handicapped people who feel uncomfortable living by themselves, it has developed a smartphone-based remote video management service that can serve as their eyes. 서비스의 핵심 기능은 장애인의 손을 자유롭게 해줄 수 있는 기능입니다. 이를 위해 근거리 무선 통신을 사용하는데요. 어, 스마트폰 앱과 그리고 어, 웨어러블 카메라 사이에 근거리 무선 통신을 사용하게 됩니다. 별도로 스마트폰을 조작할 필요가 없이 웨어러블 카메라만 조작함, 조작함을 통해서 어, 원거리로 영상을 전송할 수 있게 되어 장애인들이 편리하게 서비스를 이용할 수 있게 됩니다. After a visually handicapped person wears a wearable camera that connects wirelessly to a smartphone, the camera's frontal images are linked to the smartphone using Wi-Fi and sent to the video management system in real time through the app. Then a counselor checks these images, serving as the visually handicapped person's eyes. Through this service, visually handicapped people can get guidance on directions, selecting beverages, and checking medicine. This also enables them to check receipts and mail as if they are living with helpers around the clock. 현재 시각 장애인들이 시각적인 도움을 받으려면 가족이나 장애인 보조사들이 바로 근처에 있어야만 되는 그런 상황입니다. 하지만 이 서비스를 이용하게 되면 언제 어디서나 원격지에서도 도움을 줄수 있기 때문에 시각 장애인들의 활동 범위가 넓어지게 되고 이에 따라 삶의 질도 훨씬 높아질 수 있을 것이라고 생각합니다. To help the vulnerable people in the society, we need to care about them and always try to put ourselves in their positions. And we also need contents and technologies to support this. Korea's information and communications technology is proudly playing its role from that place. North Korea's cheering squad made national headlines here in South Korea when they visited Incheon for the Incheon Asian Track and Field Championships in 2005. That squad comprised some of the North's most gorgeous young maidens, including a certain Ri Sol Ju, who subsequently married a certain Kim Jong Un. And in September, this squad will visit again for the Incheon Asian Games. So in advance of their arrival, let's take a closer look at this elite core of choreographed beauties. 남주선의 인천에서 진행되는 제 17차 아시아 경기 대회에 우리 선수단과 함께 응원단을 파견하기로 하였다. The announcement of the reconciliatory gesture through a rare government statement came suddenly as North Korea continued with missile test firing for several weeks. 북한의 선수단 그리고 응원단 참여에 필요한 사항을 국제 관례에 따라서 준비해 나갈 계획입니다. The two sides agreed to start talks after Seoul accepted Pyongyang's proposal to include cheerleaders in the North Korean team to the Asian Games. Will this be a meaningful step toward a shift from tension to reconciliation in the Korean Peninsula or a wasted as a mere propaganda campaign? 
A group of hundreds of women, presumably in their 20s, steps down from North Korean ferry Manyongbong 92 to Busan port in 2002. Over 120,000 citizens gather to get a glimpse of the army of North Korean female cheerleaders, who reportedly have been handpicked discreetly by North Korean officials. Their smiles were impeccable, and so was their choreography, as they chanted and cheered with wooden clappers. They were the center of attention, not just because of their precision moves. They even stole the spotlight from the home team they were rooting for because of their beauty. North Korea sent hundreds of female cheerleaders to international sporting events in South Korea in 2002, 2003, and 2005. Lee Seol-ju, wife of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, was later confirmed to have been among the 2005 contingent to Incheon. It is reported that North Korean elite women feel privileged to be selected as cheerleaders. 가는 것 자체는 굉장히 대단한 영광이에요. 근데 이렇게 뽑히고 나면 자기도 좋아하고 뭐 부모들 좋아하고 자랑스럽게 여기고. The cheerleaders are selected through rigorous guidelines and stages. 평양에 있는 대학생들, 예술인들 중에서 선발이 되고 키160 이상이 되고 출신 성분이 좋아야 되는데 이 속에서 이제 기관 단체장들, 보안상 협조단이나 뭐 음악 대학이나 대학장, 학교장이 이제 추천하는 사람들로 중앙당에서 면접을 보는 거예요. A good-looking woman in her early 20s, from a good family with an average height of more than 160 centimeters, is qualified for the national cheering squad. Once recruited, the women enter a three-month training camp. 응원 단원들의 뭐 동작 연습인데 그 다음에 추가적으로 하는 거는 피부 마사지도 몇 번씩 조금 해주고 그리고 어뭐 식사도 영양 식사 식단을 짜서 이렇게 좀잘 주죠. What takes up most of their time during the training is not the dances and chants, but the so-called ideology discipline classes. 당연히 유일사상체계 학습이라든가 뭐또 남한에 갔을 때 기자들이 물어보면 질문을 하면 될수록 면 눈을 마주치지 말고 대답을 회피하라는 데 부득이한 경우 인터뷰를 할 경우는 어느 한 사람을 지정을 해서 연습을 시키고 또 환자는 틀리게끔 이제 얘기를 하는 부분도 있고 가서 주체조선의 위상을 떨치고 와라 라고 적들의 심장 속에 들어가서 싸우는 것과 똑같다라고 너희들은 그러니까 가서 잘 싸워야 된다 잘 행동해야 된다는 거죠 한마디로 once the cheerleaders are done with their mission and return home from a visit to South Korea, they are reportedly closely watched to make sure their lives are unaffected by the contact with the capitalist South. 선물 받으면 바로 그 받쳐야 돼요. 그래서 보이부 여원들도 따라와서 이제 감시를 하지만 그 밖에 그 응원 단원들끼리도 서로 서로 감시하게 돼 있어요. 그리고 또 일일 생활 청와도 생활 청와를 이제 일일 매일 하게 또돼 있어요. 그래서 그렇게 하다 보니까 그런 건 괜히 가질 수 없죠. All North Korean citizens are subject to weekly sessions of confessions and criticism, where they must congregate at community centers, schools, and workplaces to speak and repent publicly for any behaviors or thoughts that can be incongruous to the Juche North Korean ideology. Members of the cheering squad must keep up with the ritual every day. 응원단으로 뽑힌 사람들은 그때부터 일일 생활 총화를 한다. 매일 같이 내가 뭘 잘못했고 반성하고 또 각오를 다지고. 근데 이게 돌아가면 임무가 바로 끝나는 게 아니라 그 뒤로 거의 한달 내지 두달 혹은 길면 6 개월까지도 이 과정을 다시 반복하는 거예요. 그리고 어, 나만 자비판을하고 끝나는 게 아니라. 친구들이 나를 비판을 하거든요. 나도 저 사람을 호상 비판을 해야 되니까 정말 별 얘기가 다 나오는 거죠. 그 과정이 굉장히 괴롭다 그래요. 너무 너무 싫었다 이런 얘기들을 합니다. North Korean cheerleaders have been to sporting events in South Korea three times, starting with the Asian Games in 2002. They came to symbolize inter-Korean sports diplomacy and the two Koreas at peace. But their role could stop as a symbol. Despite its charm offensive through the dispatch of a cheering troop for the first time in nearly a decade, North Korea continues with its military saber-rattling towards the south.
North Korea may be squeezing out all possible means to draw attention amid rapidly changing geopolitical order and alliances in the region, following Chinese President Xi Jinping's recent visit to Seoul ahead of Pyongyang. Pyongyang is offering Seoul peace and making military threats at the same time and wants to turn public opinion in its favor through the attention on its cheerleaders. 남한 정부 적극적으로 나서라. 뭐 이런 어떤 의미를 가지고 담고 있는 일종의 무력 시위다. 아, 또 그것에 대한 어떤 그런 압박이다. 아, 이렇게 볼 수가 있겠습니다. 그러나 이제 에, 오이사 조치나 뭐 금강산 관광 문제 같은 경우는 또 우리 정부가 북한에게 기본적으로 요구하고 있는 그것이 정상화되기 위한 그 조건이 있지 않습니까? 그런 부분에 대해서도 북한이 어느 정도 성의를 갖고 나와야만이 일단은 좀 접점이 만들어질 수 있지 않을까 이렇게 보여집니다. Regardless of what its hidden intentions may be, any reconciliatory gestures North Korea offers cannot but be questioned if it carries on with military provocations. Pyongyang should make a clear-cut choice if it is sincere about building peace with Seoul and in the region. And that's all we have time for on BizLine this week. But do join us again next week, because the summer vacation season is almost upon us, and I, for one, can't wait. We have some questions. Where do Koreans go on their summer vacations? What do they do? How much do they spend? And what do they spend it on? We'll find out next time. But that's all for now. I'm Andrew Salmon. This was BizLine. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.